Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we're talking basics. So I've been thinking a bit because I do tutorials and I talk about certain things, but a lot of the sort of tips and tricks I give involve you already having a prior knowledge of, you know, Photoshop or Premiere, certain softwares. I kind of just like to assume that a lot of people watching already kind of know what they're doing. And that's for two reasons. One, because it's more fun to just jump right into a cool tutorial on how to duplicate yourself or how to correct a photo or something like that, rather than being like, this is what this slider does, and this is what this slider does, and this tool cuts the clip. And if you couldn't guess, the second reason is because it's super boring to talk about that stuff. I'm sorry, but it is. And I don't wanna just sit there and explain what certain tools do, but that's what I'm doing today. <laughs> so if you already know what you're doing in Premiere, even just a little bit, then this video probably won't help you that much. This video is more for people who have never used Premiere or have maybe only opened it a couple times, but they wanna do some cool stuff. They wanna edit videos and I don't know what people do in Premiere, but yes, some of this stuff might be a little boring. I'm gonna to try to present it as excitedly as I can, but the important part to remember is that once you have this foundation, you will be able to do some really cool things. And this way in the future, if I do a tutorial about Premiere, that's a little more advanced, now I can just say, well, Hey, I've done a video about this in the past. You can check it out here. All right, well, with that little intro out of the way, let's jump into some Premiere basics. First, you need to understand a little bit about how Premiere works with your files. When you import files into Premiere, you are not duplicating them into your project. Those files are not stored in the project file. You are simply pointing Premiere to the direction where your files are already stored, which means once you import files into Premiere, don't delete them they'll be gone forever. You need to keep those video files somewhere safe while you work on them. I recommend keeping every file you need for one project in the same folder, because if you have your video clips in one place and some Google images that you've downloaded in another place and your audio clips in another place, you're going to lose track of them. And if you accidentally move one of your video files or any file that's already been imported into Premiere, Premiere is not gonna know that you moved that file and it won't know where you put it. So the first thing you're doing is putting all of your project files into one location on your computer. Once you do that, we're gonna open Premiere and hit new project. Now you're gonna get a window here with a few settings. You can get into some of them if you want, but right now we really only need to worry about two things, the name of your project and where you're putting it. So at the top, name your project, whatever you want, and then click through and find the location of the, the other folders of all your other files and put your project file into that folder. That way everything is still all in one place. All right, so now click through, and now you're gonna see a bunch of windows open up. Welcome to Premiere, you made it. But as you probably noticed, it's pretty empty. We need to bring your files in. So go back to that folder on your computer where you've put all your video files and audio and whatever you're working with. And there are ways you can go through ingesting the footage and applying names and effects to the clips. But in my opinion, the best and easiest way of doing this is just dragging the folders from the window right into Premiere. So you just wanna click on your Windows Explorer or your Apple Finder window and just drag the files or folders all the way over to the window that says project. And now all of those files are in your project. You can now click those files in Premiere and use them in your timeline and do whatever you want to them. But before we start doing anything to these clips, I wanna walk you through some of the tools that you have available to you that will make your life a lot easier. The first is the selection tool. This is just your standard tool and probably the one you're gonna use the most. The shortcut for it is V on the keyboard. And this tool just lets you drag your clips around. You can grab the edges of them to trim them in, but this is just your general purpose moving clips around tool. The next important tool you need to know about is the razor tool. The shortcut for this on your keyboard is C. And when you have this tool selected, any clip in your timeline that you click on will just be sliced down the middle, Slice. You basically just use this tool to cut parts of clips and turn them into multiple clips so you can edit them individually. Now, the pen tool is one that you probably won't use very often, at, maybe not right at the beginning. The shortcut is P on the keyboard, and this allows you to create points for keyframes. So you can click on certain points of the video, which will add in the keyframes and let you adjust them, and basically just gives you a finer amount of adjustment. Next is the hand tool. The shortcut for it is H, 
And it's basically just a tool that lets you drag around on your timeline and move it around. I don't use this tool very often because no matter what tool you have selected, you can also just use the slider bar at the bottom or the wheel on your mouse. And the last tool I'm gonna to talk about is the zoom tool. The shortcut for this one is, you guessed it, Z or Z. And this does exactly what you would imagine. It just allows you to zoom in closer on your timeline. Again, I don't use this one very often because you can also just drag the corners of the slider on the bottom to zoom in or zoom out, or press plus or minus on your keyboard. Now there are a few more tools, but we're just talking about basics right now. So these are all the ones you need to know about. Now there are a few more tools than this, but these are just the basic ones that, that are sort of gonna get you through your first few edits. Now that you have a bit of a grasp on how to use your tools, it's time to bring some video footage in. Now there's a few ways you can do this. You wanna go over to your project window and select the clip of your choice. Now, if you double click on this clip, it will open in your source preview window. This is just a window that allows you to see what's in that clip and sort of what it is. It's sort of like a preview before you bring it into your timeline. Now, if you already know what's on the clip and you know you're gonna use it and you don't want to sort of preview it first, you can just drag the clip straight onto your timeline. But if you do want to sort of pick out a certain part of that video real quick, or maybe you just wanna double check and make sure that's the video you think it is, then double click on it, it will open in your source window, and you can use the little playhead to drag back and forth and see what's in that video. Now, if there's a certain part of this video you want, you can drag the playhead to where you want the beginning to be and create an in point by pressing N and then go to where you want the video to end and press O to create an out point. Now, if you click on the clip in the source window and drag it onto your timeline, it's only going to bring in the part that you just selected, the in to the out, not the whole clip. This is great if you have a really long video and you know you're only gonna need a little part of it, you can just go right in there you can just select it in the source window and drag it in. Now, there's also two buttons right below that preview window. It just got really dark outside. I feel like my room just got way darker. Where was I? So there are two buttons below your source preview window. The first one, if you click it and drag it onto your timeline, is only going to bring in the video from that clip with no audio. And then if you click and drag from the other button, you're only gonna bring in the audio. But for right now, we're gonna click and drag on that whole video and just bring it right into the timeline because we want audio and sound in this case. All right, so you're in your timeline, this is great. So this is where most of the editing magic happens. So now if you have your selection tool selected, you can click on that clip and drag it to different points in the timeline, wherever you want. And when you hover the mouse over the ends of each clips, you'll see it turn into sort of a little red bracket thingy. When you see that, you can click and drag to shorten the clip and cut out parts you don't want. Now you can also do what we talked about with the razor tool and cut the clip up and remove parts you don't want that way. And if you wanna get a little more complex with it, you can add layers to it. For example, if you want text over your video, or maybe you want a different video over your video. Well, as you can see, you have a few tracks there layered on top of each other. Whatever's at the top of the track is what's going to be shown first, and whatever's at the bottom is going to be covered up by anything on the top. So now I talked about how you can also edit your videos and add effects and different things like that. If you go to your effects window, you have a search bar where you can type in the name of any effect that is in Premiere and it will show up right there. For this example, I'm just gonna talk about the sort of regular positioning tools, but these basics apply to pretty much any sort of effect you apply in your video. So when you add an effect to your video, you're going to see the name of the parameter you're adjusting, such as position or scale, and then next to it, you're gonna see a number. Now you can click on that number and enter in your own value, or you can just click and hold and then drag back and forth to increase or decrease that number. Let's use position as an example. Now, if you just click and drag on this parameter, the position of the video, you can move it around and it's just going to stay in that spot. But if you want this to move over the course of the video, then you can add what's called a keyframe by hitting the little stopwatch on the left. This allows you to put specific parameters for specific parts of the video. So you can say five seconds into the video clip, I want the video position to be here, but then at 10 seconds, I want it to be at a different point. So to turn on keyframes, you hit the stopwatch and it will add your first keyframe at the position where your playhead is right now. So if you want your video clip to move from one side of the video to the other over a period of time, then with your playhead, scroll to the point of the video where you want your clip to go all the way to the other side, and then put a keyframe at that point in the video where you move it all the way across. Then play back the video and you'll see it move all the way across over that period of time you set. And you can always make this shorter or longer 
by making the keyframes closer to each other or further apart over the course of the video. One more basic thing you might wanna learn how to do is put text on the video. Now you can select your text tool, which I didn't talk about, by pressing T and then clicking on the video to create a text layer. Now you notice another clip gets added above your video clip. That is your text layer. In your timeline, that is the thing representing what shows up on screen for your text. So you can shorten it, lengthen it, move it around to whatever point you want in the video, and that's where it's going to show up. So click on the text, change it to whatever you want it to be, and then if you look into your effects window, you can see all the parameters you can adjust. You can change the font size, the font type, if you want a stroke on the font, you can spend a long time playing around with that stuff. There's also things like we just talked about with positioning and scale that you can apply just to the text layer. Okay, so you've created your masterpiece. Now, how do you show it to people? Well, you're gonna need to export it. Now, there's a few ways you can do this and a lot of different settings you can go through but we're just gonna go through the basics. So with your timeline window selected, the keyboard shortcut is Control M to export that sequence. So this is gonna open up a whole new window with a lot of numbers and a lot of stuff that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. My advice to you right now is just ignore all of it. You can learn about bit rates and codecs and resolutions later, but right now we just want to get you a video that you can share with people. So you should choose a preset. I recommend choosing the H.264 with the match source high bitrate option. This is gonna give you just a standard MP4 file with a good bitrate that will allow the video to play back basically. Now you can pretty much export your video to any format imaginable. And if you wanna learn the intricacies of how high your bitrate needs to be for a certain amount of motion in your video, then you can spend the time to look that up. But if you've chosen your preset, click on the file name and it's going to open a window where you can choose where you're going to save it and what you want to name it. Again, you should select the folder that you created at the beginning of all this with your video files and images and whatever in it. This way everything stays in one spot and you don't lose it. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, lose files, Will, really? on a computer. Think I'm gonna lose my digital files? Edit enough videos and enough photos over a long enough period of time, you'll lose something. But anyway, hit the export button and just wait while your computer renders the video. It might take a long time depending on how fast your computer is and the complexity of the project you are working on. But once it's done, your whole video should be exported in one easily shareable file that you can put on YouTube or Dropbox or however you wanna share it with people. And there you go, those are the basics of Premiere. Now all this stuff on its own, yeah, it's kinda of boring. But once you know all this stuff and you know the shortcuts and what the tools do, then you can follow along to pretty much any tutorial on the internet and learn new skills and learn how to do more specific, more fun things. But now that you know this stuff, hopefully you can create the videos that you wanna create and you're not just gonna be frustrated because you don't know how to use the software. If this video helped you in any way, please leave a comment down below. I would love to hear how. And if you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like button or subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this, maybe some more complex videos that that are a little more interesting and a little more fun. Or maybe not, if you wanna see some more basics videos like this, like Photoshop's basics, or maybe camera exposure basics, then please let me know by telling me in the comments. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.